There's a way of thinking about error. You, you, you don't exactly know what you're doing, so how do you get to the point where you know what you're doing? I think follow your internal intuitions, and be honest about it, and what will happen is a star will appear and guide you, and the star is whatever makes your life meaningful and maybe you'll take some tentative steps in that direction and you'll get a little ways and you'll think, no, that's wrong and then the thing that makes your life meaningful will appear over there and then you take a few tentative steps in that direction and, but as you step and walk towards these things you change and as you change you get wiser and what happens is if you keep following these things that make your life meaningful then you correct yourself across time you see the thing there and that's wrong and you see it there and that's wrong and you see it there and that's wrong but you keep chasing it and as you chase it you move forward and as you move forward and you do things and you learn from your mistakes because you're honest and you're watching you get wiser and wiser and the consequence of all those mistakes is you'll self-correct the mistakes and 20 years down the road maybe you won't be making so many mistakes and they say it takes 10,000 hours to be an expert at something so you would need 10,000 hours of practice following what it is that you need to follow I've come to the conclusion, as a consequence of studying the things I've been telling you about, that belief has a religious substructure. If you go all the way down into someone's belief structure, right to the bottom, what you find are religious presuppositions. They, the person might not agree, but I don't think that matters. I think generally people don't know. Here's an old religious presupposition. It's older than Christianity. I suppose Christianity is the most powerful proponent of this viewpoint. There's a heaven and there's a hell and you should live your life so that you end up in one of them what's happened to Christianity is that that's an afterlife thing but I don't think it is an afterlife thing I think it's a now thing I see people who are in hell all the time and you can see them if you walk down Bloor Street if, I'm not kidding, it's, it's no joke if you walk by someone in hell you can't look at them you won't look at them, you'll, you'll give them a wide berth and if you look at them and you really look at them they'll either become aggressive or ashamed because they do not want you to see where they are because they don't want to see where they are and by the same token heaven's a real place too and now and then you're in it but you don't notice because you don't believe in it there was an old gospel Gnostic gospel that was dug up in 1957 the gospel of Thomas and in the gospel of Thomas Christ says the kingdom of heaven is spread out on the earth but men do not see it and I, I don't think that's a metaphor or, or maybe it is a metaphor, it's a deep metaphor it means that life, human life is very expansive and we live in the middle, it's kind of a mediocre middle often and at one extreme there's hell and the other extreme is heaven and we bounce back and forth between them without really noticing and I could say, well here, here's something to consider if the things you're doing are landing you in hell, stop unless you want to be there and you know if you think, you, all you have to do is think about your life over the last year you, you can be certain that you can call to mind times when you would have rather that did not happen and so the lesson from that is clear don't set up those conditions anymore and by the same token if you watch yourself you can tell when you're where you want to be and I could say well if you're where you want to be and that's really the right place then all you should ever do is practice to be there 